Oh la la. Okay, so Joseph Stravinsky, you are from the LNF. Oh, why is this not loading? There we go. You're from the city of LNF in the kind of central northern east of the North Sea, northeastern region of the realm. And uh, you found yourself over here in Gryhold, um, as you mentioned in your backstory. You have found some work here. You were taught by somebody named by Frederick, kind of the ways of the rogue, how to pick locks and things like that, if I'm not mistaken. And you have a sewer hideout, and you've picked up some honest work as well, delivering meats from the local butcher to different places throughout the city. And you're you're here in Gryhold. Gryhold is a fairly chilly place. It was originally a dwarven place many hundreds of years ago. And over the past hundred years, other races have found their home here and built on top of the dwarven masonry. My golf. Yes. My gone. Okay, sorry, I was distracted. And um, it's uh, it was flurrying lightly right now, and it's the equivalent of maybe November, the beginning of November. Um, and right now, so it's chilly. It's a little bit windy. And uh, you're in the market district of the city. Let me show you the map of the city. Um, this is the map of the city. Did you get that right there? Mm-hmm. All right, let me zoom in. So this area is in the lower area of the merchant's ward, kind of between the merchant's ward and the market ward, where you see all those kind of tents and... Um, overhanging things in like a triangular shape and right uh, now you're you're with um hold on let me pull that information out one moment yeah so you're standing in front of uh balra Orvin, he is the butcher who you work for. Balra Orvin, yeah? Yes, Balra Orvin. Right? And you hear the seagulls flying overhead, and it's um it's about midday for you. Let me get a pencil and paper out as well. I'm also pulling, still pulling a few things out, a few dice, things like that, so no rush. No rush, mate, no rush. <sighs> Grabbing my dice, okay. Wait, do I have a watch myself? I can't remember, hold on, let me inventory. <laughs> No, it doesn't seem that I do. I don't have it. Anyway. And you're showing up for your uh, your first order of the day. You have a bit of a late shift, so you usually work and start in the like mid-afternoon, early afternoon. And um, you see him chopping a bunch of slabs of really kind of the um, parts of the cow that most people don't really order unless it's for feeding some kind of animal or beast of some kind. As well. Joseph, I have an order for you today. It's in the northeastern side of the city. All right. What do I need to do? Well, it's actually a very special order today. It's for the Great Library. Oh. We don't get a lot of customers there, do we? No, we do not. So consider it an honor, but uh, you're going to have to carry this. And he tosses you a very, very large sack. With, uh, it's one of the heaviest sacks that he ever made you carry before. It's about a 45 to 50 pound sack. 
of just red meat, all the parts that nobody wants, and it's a double layered sack um, with some straw on the bottom, so it's not really dripping blood or anything, but it's uh, it's definitely an unusual order. Usually you're, you're sent to deliver the good cuts of meat to certain nobles or to maybe even the orphanage, they'll give you some chicken, but this time it's a large sack of meat to the library, no less. Hmm. And this goes to the library. These cuts, huh? Quite an interesting order, I must say. And we can pull well, up the map. I'm sorry, we can pull up the map again. And the library is located on the top right of the map, across that little bridge. Hmm. That's quite a long, quite a fucking walk. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> Is there any? Is there anything else uh, I need to know before I uh, go on this quite hefty journey with this bag? Not much else you need to know, but they're expecting you. Good to know. Well, I guess I'll see you in a few years. <laughs> I guess I take the bag up to my over my shoulder. Very good. Um, so we'll take a look at the map here and you have to make your way through the merchant's ward and as you do um, you see all the usual shops let me pull up some of my notes here um, there seems to be some sort of a church thing too if my on the map or on the um, on the map uh, yeah there's all sorts of places in the city. Um, but right now, as you are walking through this portion of the map, you see the usual things. There's all kinds of bazaars with um, art and musical instruments. And um, let me see what else we have here. Oh, basically, all the basic shops that you would expect. You know, different kinds of foods and drinks, um, even some some jewelries and scrolls. But nothing of nothing of high value in this district of the city. Um, yeah, I can already feel my fingers itching a little bit. <laughs> um, we are going to put you in another scene. One moment. And here you are passing through. Uh, the Harbor Ward. Oh. Yeah, uh -huh. and you're already familiar with the Baron Hen Inn up to your, up to the top there. That's the place where a lot of sailors come and drink, and even some locals, there's some of the best food there. And you've done many, many deliveries there as well. Um, you're actually quite used to uh, visiting this place, as you've, um, you, you deliver most of their meats, actually. You, they, most of them come from you since you've been living here in Gryhold for about two months now? Two months? About two months, or, or was it longer? I don't remember. Remind me. Was quite, it was a lot longer, so basically... Oh, that's uh, right, that's right. Uh, basically, uh, I came here uh, with my father at, at a young age for uh, a quote-unquote business trip, and for some reason my father never returned after leaving me to um, to the fucking... the um, base to that, like, a small... You know, room rented. I think he was he wasn't really, really. He wasn't too young. He wasn't too old. Let's say he maybe he was. He was seven. Maybe he was young. And oh then, yeah, that's um, that's my mistake. Yeah. yeah. So you've been here for yeah. much longer than. Yeah, I mean Frederick. He uh, took care of me in Malar's throat. He taught me all the stuff uh, I know. I guess basically, fighting stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm um. A thief on their side. <laughs> Very good, excellent. Um, make a perception roll. Perception roll, okay, so I go to my uh, sheet. Perception, perception, perception. What do I press here again? <laughs> um, so if you look at your skills, kind of listed down the side there, uh, you'll see. Um, a per perception, ah, perception option, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll press that. 
Nein. <laughs> um, nine, okay. Um, I'm actually adding an image, give me one moment. Uh, let's see here. Doesn't matter if I roll physical dice or virtual ones, I always seem to <laughs> get low ones. Um, you notice this person who's a drow um, going into the tavern um, and they look like they've been a little bit injured and they look tired and she is going in and you're not used to seeing drow here you've lived here like you said for several years and you only see drow every once in a while and she's going into the tavern there and she's got a, a magical looking bow on her back and what else do you see? You also see that the ships are on lockdown. The bay has a giant chain across the mouth of the bay, bay, preventing any ships from moving in and out. You know that the city has been on lockdown since the, the plague bay. has been yeah. coming around, also known as the rot. And the king has been acting strangely. Um, he hasn't been himself with a lot of these policies. My cough. A drow, you say, went into the tavern. My god. Uh, I suppose I can take a small break. I mean, this bag is quite heavy. <laughs> 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 so, I guess, I guess I'll do a um, little stop by the tavern. Maybe get a small drink, you know, to quench my thirst. Because if I look at, according to the map, I've hold this heavy bag for half the city already, which is quite big. If I'm not mistaken. Ah, uh, let me give you control of your token, by the way, one moment. Actually, <clears throat> this city is smaller than our, <laughs> our capital. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that doesn't matter. There we go. Alright, so you have control of your token, you can make your way up there. Yes. This entrance, the one with the stairs, or one with the stairs, or... Uh, yes, the one with the stairs there. Mm. Okay, I can't leave the bag out here. I can't leave the bag out here. <laughs> so I guess I'll hold this bag up here. Feel it with lovely, fresh, be the best cuts we can give. <laughs> Alright, let's go on in. And you tempted me too much. <laughs> Where I'm are happy. we here with the damn maps? I'm getting a lot of maps. Mm, uh, yeah, where where is my map? My goodness. Why can't I find it? One moment. I'm overwhelmed. Here we are. Whoa, this is a big place too. Yeah. And so you recognize... Actually, make a perception roll. Perception, yes. One moment. Um. So I have... 21! 21! Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, with a 21, you recognize at the front of the bar, the, the innkeeper Gregor Bremel is a very nice fellow. He's always offering you uh, an extra plate of food, you know, some, uh, some bread on the side and sometimes a pour of his own brew that he makes and requests your, your um, opinion on his brew for the free sample. You also see a few other patrons around the room. You see um, an elven male sitting uh, um, you see you see a man that you don't recognize with no shirt who's been kind of shadow boxing and moving around a bit looks very strong you also see a um, a male dwarf sitting at this table and um, you see a, a female human over here sharing a drink with the male dwarf and then over here you see a um, uh, a woman with one arm. You see that her her left arm is prosthetic, metallic, and um, 
she appears to be wearing uh, armor. 21, 21 perception roll. Hmm. You also notice that she has a ring on her that may may resemble the silk strands, but you're not certain from that distance. And then you also see the drow sitting at the bar top. And with a 21 perception roll, it's very high. You notice that she is ordering a drink, and you are familiar with the drinks that they have here during this week and this month. And Gregor Bremel, Gregor Bremel is pouring one of his very own homebrewed stouts for her. And everything else seems to be in order. Um, business this place usually is. Nice. And you can also smell some duck on the air, too. You know that they've been cooking one of their trademark duck dishes. Oh. Um, I can't cr control my token again. <laughs> ah, I'll fix that for you. There you go. Thank you. I guess I'll uh, steadily make my way over to the um, bar with the bag. Um, I guess I'll write, I put this stool up right, put the bag next to myself and sit down with a thought. Gregor is happy to see you. He says, Joseph, good to see you. I see you have quite the order today, but I did not order that. Yes, yes, it is not free. I um, thought I would come and uh, take a rest at my favorite bar, yes? It's, uh, with that heavy bag, it's quite a haul, you know, from <laughs> to go that far where I'm going, so I came here to quench my thirst. Well, Gre uh, well, Joseph, you're always welcome. And he pours you a uh, nice out from the house. House. Oh, you're too kind, my friend. One day, I will pay you uh, for a full pint. Which I've already prob probably done. <laughs> he smiles back through his, his thick brown beard and he says, You know that you're always uh, efficient bringing me the meats that I order at the best prices in the city. So, it is my honor to provide you with a good drink when you pass through town. I'll drink to that. Thank you. And, I'll take and, a... and tell tell Balra that his latest cut of meat is a customer favorite. I'll be sure to tell Wait, what, was, what did he say again? It was uh... Uh, the, a, a customer favorite, a good good type of meat. Alright, and like I said, I'll take a sip soon, Seem? I don't know what's the right word, but a drink. Sorry. Yeah, the stout, the stout is quite good. Um, it's good on a cold, um, it's good on a cold winter's day. Um, and I would like you to make, um, <laughs> make an insight roll, an insight roll. Insight roll, that On the drown next to you. Insight. That's a f five. <laughs> a five, okay. Yeah, I'm enjoying my drink too much <laughs> right now. You see that this uh, this drow woman may already be somewhat intoxicated. Uh, she may have uh, already been inside and maybe had gone out for fresh air. Um, but that's only with a five, so you can't. Um. Um. Yeah. So you're enjoying your drink, your, the meat is there, should be good for another hour or so before you have to make it to your destination for it to be fresh enough for the order to be complete. And um, so far things are good, you know, you're, you're earning your coin, you're, you're stopping by the friend's tavern, you're getting a free drink. Things seem to be going pretty much normally as they go throughout the city. And then Gregor, uh, Gregor has a moment of time because his waiter is working for him and everything seems to be in order. And he says, Have you heard about Maladar and his tower? Met a few days earlier in the city. Earlier in the city. Hmm. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Wait, 
Uh, can I make a check to... Ah, never mind. I haven't heard it, no. I've been... Uh, doing my things, you know. Not a lot of time to listen to what people say. You know. You see the drow woman uh, turn and say, uh, Yes, I was, I was there for that. I saw my friends take care of that. It was easy to handle. Easy situation to handle, she says. And Gregor says, well, well, what was that? Says, well, well, what was that? The mad wizard all about? And you could tell that she's a little too drunk to recollect the entire encounter. But um, on second thought, you take a closer look at her and make an investigation roll. Um, investigation. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, wait, do I have expertise on that? Hold on. Hold on. No, I don't have expertise, but it's quite high. Let's see what I get. 18. <laughs> Even with the 6. Oh, you got an 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, well, I think the six, 6 was the bonus that you have on it, I think. So you might... Yeah. Um, so now that you're sitting a little bit closer... Yeah. So now that you're sitting a little bit closer to this individual, they, they, they definitely stand out. Um, sometimes people are a little racist against drow. They sometimes have a negative connotation because... Originally, the Drow are from a place called the Underdark, and places like the Underdark, which have otherworldly creatures and sometimes uh, evil beings. But there are also Drow that are perfectly normal, and they fit into society as well. You just tend not to see them all the way up in the northwestern part of the Alais province, where we are here in Gryald, in the the, uh, the Dwaland Island region. Um, so she does stand out to you, and you can't help but have a quick look over her adventurer, perhaps a ranger or something, adventurer, perhaps a ranger or something of the sort, because you know that the bow that she carries is uh, definitely unique. Um, you also see that she has uh, some hand crossbows on her belt, a rapier, and um, a backpack, an adventurer's leather backpack with um, all sorts of things inside, you can only imagine. And um, if you may, roll, a, roll an arcana check. 10. 10. Um, you're not really sure what kind of bow she has, but you know that it is indeed unique and has expert craftsmanship on it. So you imagine it to be magical. You imagine it to be, be magical. So you think that what she says, although she may be drunk, is true and that she is with a group of adventurers from out of town. And you see Gregor nod and he's... Uh, He's interested, but he doesn't know what else to say to her, because he also can understand that she has been drinking. I just I take another sip of my drink. It is just as crisp as the last. I, I guess a little smile creeps to my, um, I guess. Oh, it's so good. It's always, oh, it's so good. It's always good to drink some good booze. Hmm, wait, hold on, let me... A band of adventurers, you say? Um, so how far do you come from? Don't... You're uh, quite a sight to behold. We don't see a lot of your kind around here. I uh, keep drinking a little bit. Um, make another insight roll as she responds, and she says, We're all from different places. But uh, we have most recently come from Port Firth. Uh, you can't really tell what's running through her head or her attitude. Uh, she does say that they recently traveled. Does say that they recently traveled from Port Firth. Well On done. your 18 investigation, you also notice that she she seems a bit sickly, a bit tired, a bit worn out. You can only imagine that her journey must have been intense. God, I don't know what to ask or what to say. I know I have to. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Wait. Hmm. Nope. I just keep enjoying my drink. <laughs> you see, bro. Reception. 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 One mm -hmm. moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait, please. Ah, here. 18. Ah, uh, very good. You hear a chair push out from a table from behind you, uh, as if someone is getting up and walking toward you, and you hear 
the clack of the heels of the woman with the prosthetic arm walking toward the bar top. Uh, uh, fuck, uh, do I have... I just... Um, okay. <clears throat> I keep my cool and uh, just keep... She walks up to Gregor and she walks up to Gregor and flashes um, a singular finger as if to say one and Gregor is uh, then pouring her a stout the same that you and Nim I mean the sorry the drow are drinking <clears throat> and as she raises her finger you see that it's the same finger that has the ring on it, her index finger on her right hand. And, um... What is the ring? Where, what is the symbol? Can I check? Investigation, that would be 25. Investigation, that would be 25. Wow, that's impressive. Um, you see that it is indeed a signet ring of the Silk Strands. Their logo is somewhat of a uh, intertwined double S, which signifies Silk Strands. And uh, you see that she is indeed... Oh no. And you know also, with that investigation and with your previous knowledge, that only indoctrinated members of th that particular Thieves' Guild wears that ring. And although they're not based out of Gryhold, you know that they do come t sometimes move through and operate in Gryhold while also respecting the space of the Crimson Coin, also known as the Red. What What was the... I didn't hear one word. Uh, what What was the... I didn't hear one word. Uh, what uh, kind of members get the ring? Really? I'm sorry, say again? Uh, what uh, what kind of members get that ring? I didn't catch that word. Only uh, only members that are like officially. Um, I said indoctrinated, but what I meant to say is like really, like officially have become a member, not just like a tryout or anything like that. So you know that she's indeed a member of the Silk Strands, and you also see that she has suffered some injuries lately too. Uh, both the Drow and the woman on your left and right both seem to have had a very rough journey, and the Drow even has some bruising on her face. Uh, this woman here seems to have bandages wrapped around her, t minor cuts on her, minor cuts on her normal arm. And she does indeed have a metallic prosthetic arm, which you can now clearly see now that you're closer, especially with the 25 investigation. One moment, one moment. I have to put on the sw uh, a sweater because I am cold. Understandable. Voila. Welcome back. Mm. Welcome back. Mm. <laughs> oh, Pelia. And these are like the ones I owe also something for, yeah? Not the... Sp specifically, yeah. Specifically so strands. So the Crimson Coin you're more so trying to avoid because they're associated with the uh, silk strands and you know that if one of the thieves guild has an issue with somebody they usually put out some sort of bounty or alert for for anyone from either thieves skill because they're cooperative and you know that the leader of the silk strands merrick rommel is specifically pissed off at you and you owe him a dragon's egg which is yeah. when you were at one point yeah. when you were at one point in the thieves guild uh dropping off something also as a messenger you were responsible for accidentally destroying it somehow. And we'll go into those details another time. What? Um, fuck. I, don't, I suppose I am wearing my eye patch because uh, one eye, or one working eye. The right one is working. Uh, do I have... What? Wait, so... so what kind of clothes... Uh, do, so, what kind of clothes... Uh, do I have... Um, let me check your inventory. I think you, um, let me check your inventory. I think you might have a cloak. I mean, like the stuff that. I mean, like the stuff that. You've a scar. Overcoats. Coats. To completely disguise yourself right now, you completely disguise yourself right now. You do have an over. 
So I guess I am wearing the <coughs> bowler. So I guess I am wearing the <coughs> bowler hat. Um, I just, I just, not too obvious. Tuck my chin into there. Just tuck my chin into there. So it's not quite logical to when I'm. <laughs> quite logical to when I'm. <laughs> um, and she sips. Um, and she sips. Uh, Gregor, into the back. Uh, Gregor, into the back. Um, make a on the wall behind the. Um, make a on the wall behind the bar. Sick. See that the painting wall behind the bar. Sick. See that the painting is of um, a grand, beautiful ancient. Ar See that the painting is of um, a grand, beautiful ancient architecture. Or ancient architecture. Um, and it's ornate. And that's Try all. to understand if she's thinking about stealing it. Make an Try to understand if she's thinking about stealing it. Make an in make an insight roll. Insight, twelve. With the twelve, um, you believe she's Not deep in thought about something, something else, and you think that she's just sort of looking at the painting as a distraction for her thoughts. And like I said, she does look like she also had a, a rough time lately, and has been through some some physical journey or something. Another sip. Sorry? Another, Another sip. sip. Oh, very how, good, how very big, good. How big is the pint or tankard or...? <laughs> the tanker, the tanker is about a pint, so you're about... You're already about a third through it, because you just sort of have a natural tendency of drinking fairly quickly, as you're, um, you've been taught to be so sort of on the go, and your job also has you often on the go, you're, you're usually fairly aware of time and things like that as you make deliveries, so you just naturally catch yourself realizing that you've been drinking it. Here. Yeah, I guess I'm feeling quite warm and fussy inside already, eh? Yeah, I guess I'm feeling quite warm and fussy inside already, eh? Yeah, make a constitution roll. <laughs> yeah. uh, saving, okay. 17. Well, it wouldn't be a save, it would just be, just do a constitution roll. So just hit the constitution word, constitution on the left. Uh, yeah, it's under the saving rolls, I guess. Oh no, that one. Uh, wait. Wait, so I where, press so where it shows your abilities. Oh, there. Let me see. Yeah. There. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it it would have taken a terrible roll for you to even have felt much, but with a 22, like you feel great, you feel fine. I mean, you're you're just feeling overall pretty happy and healthy. The drink is is nice. You're just very well off right now physically. You're just very well off right now physically. Yes. You do notice that she is turning your way and actually is looking you over. <clears throat> okay. I ignore her and enjoy my drink. Um, you see her take out a parchment from her leather pouch on her belt and um, a small charcoal pencil. And uh, she starts writing with her right hand while occasionally glancing up at you. Hmm. Can I have a little where I'm sitting? Can Michael. I maybe understand what where I'm sitting? Can Michael. I maybe understand what she might be writing or make a perception roll? Perception that is eleven. Hmm. You can't really see from across her tankard what she's writing. She's writing on the other side of her tankard, potentially on purpose. After a moment she slides the paper over to you. Oh. And um I slowly bring it over to me and <clears throat> read. Like, I, I put... uh, mm -hmm. Go on. I like don't pick it up, I just it's on the table and I'm reading it from the table. You recognize it as um written in you recognize it as um written in coded thieves cant. And you understand what it says. It says, I know who you are. 
but you don't need to worry. Merrick left me for dead. So you are in good company. And that's all it says. I take another sip. From and she reaches fairly long, because she has to reach from her, her right side with her good arm, and pulls the parchment back after she thinks you've read it. Fuck, I just want... <clears throat> I, okay. <clears throat> Maybe it's for the best. <clears throat> Maybe it's for the best. She starts to write again on the other side of the same paper. Um, and yeah, she's writing for a few moments. What do you do? Hmm. I'm guessing my drink is almost done. It is almost done. You have about two sips left. Two sips. It's quite good though. I take a small sip. Mm -hmm. Just so a little sip, a little bit. She slides the parchment back to you one last time. I eye it. On the side of the paper is also written in thieves can't. Of the paper is also written in thieves can't. It says he is headed to Ivestad as soon as the port is open. Ivestad, Ivestad. And do you know that Ivestad is to the north? And you know that there is lots of mining there. There is um, slavery there. Um, there are different type of money laundering and smuggling there. It's a, for the most part, an is inhospitable place, except for the actual port of Ivestad itself. People often refer to the surrounding region as Ivestad as well. Um, draws in business as it is one of the few places where draws in business as it is one of the few places where supplies are brought in and sent out. Um, but human trade is very prevalent there, more than anywhere else in the realm. Hmm. I why well, still the no why well, the note is still uh, within my grasp. I um, look at her like with the side of the head and um, yeah, just look at her. I what um, wait um. What's, oh fuck, what's the word? Um, what is she like besides the uh, metallic arm, stuff like that? Like, any expression um, to, to why she might be doing this just by visuals? To why she might be doing this just by visuals? Uh, make an insight roll again. <laughs> A lovely eight. Um, this is what she looks like. Did you get that? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's what she looks like. Um, and what would you have? You had an 8, right? Yes. So, based on her expression, she is not showing much at all. She tends to have very flat expressions from when, since when you first saw her. She doesn't give much away. But based on what she wrote, you know, you put two and two together and realize that she wrote that Merrick did indeed go. Your only assumption at this point in time your only assumption at this point in time is that perhaps she has something against him. Which is why she is not helping to capture you, while she is perhaps still a member of the Soap Strands, but has beef with Merrick. And then she grabs the parchment and stands up with her tankard and walks over to the fireplace. And very carefully places the parchment in the flame. Mm. Make a perception roll. Uh, she goes and sits back down after that. Um, um, you think you hear beyond the bustling of the tavern and the crackling fireplace a rumbling outside somewhere. Mm. 
Do you hear that? I ask the... I ask... Gregor. Gregor um, stops what he's doing. He was cutting, cutting some meat himself, actually. And... He says, I... I thought I heard something, too. Shouldn't be any ships coming in. Sometimes you have a sailor who doesn't know what he's doing. Hey, Gregor, do you mind if I use the back door this time? Well, you know that we have uh, a back window that you can use. A back window? Uh, from memory, do I... No, uh, can the bag of meat fit through that? Uh, yes. It'll be a bit cumbersome, and um, you'll have to... Uh, move a few things out of the way of the window, but he's he's okay with you doing that. Um, also, how much would this... Uh, if it wouldn't be on the house? About three silver... It wouldn't be on the house. About three silver pieces. About three silver pieces. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish my pint, stout. Mm -hmm. Still the best brew I know in town. Thanks again, uh, old friend. And I'll um, slide uh, him one silver piece uh, as a tip and just a little friendly wink. With my only eye. <laughs> Very nice. Make sure to... Um... Yeah, I already removed the silver from my money. Excellent. He says... Thank you, Joseph. May Moradin be with you. Um, and you know, even with an oh, Gregor is not a dwarf. Um, many people say that. Gregor is not a dwarf. Um, many people say that here. It's um, one of the more popular gods here. This is uh, originally a dwarven city, and people adhere to a lot of the dwarven ideals in this city. And he flashes you a smile, and he gestures toward the door here, under the stairwell. Under the stairwell, okay. I uh, put the back over my back, look at Gregor, give him like a nice, uh, you know the Jack Sparrow salute that he does with the two fingers, kind of like that salute. Mm -hmm. I glance over to that woman again. Hmm. And I just, I continue to where I was going. Okay, do you go through the door? Yes, the back door. I'm going through the back. And, um, make a and um, make a perception check. Twenty. You hear two more loud rumbles outside, much more clear this time. So much so that even the windows rattle a little bit. And you see, um, he's um, this uh, porter here who is carrying a barrel. Even gets startled at the sound. You see that there are many things here that are normally in a kitchen. You see some of the hot coals, um, so the rotisserie. You see a hatch that leads downward, and you see two windows that lead outward. You see that the hatch is um, bolted with a very, uh, very good lock. And you may have to make your way, but it shouldn't be too difficult to get through the window if you're able to get over the food. It shouldn't be too difficult to get through the window if you're able to get over the food. Could I maybe try to understand where the come from? Did it come from, like, the side where the windows are, or the noise? Because I don't like that. You are not sure, but it sounds like it came from far away, but it was a very big rumbling sound. Hmm. Well, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, mind if I use this window right here, and uh, I just politely start moving stuff out of the way so I wouldn't, you know, soil the food with my boots. Hey, out. Okay. And are you taking the sack? Okay. And are you taking the sack as well? Yes. Alright. Um, the drop down is up only about five feet, um, but you are carrying a very big sack, so make a... Okay. Make okay. um make an it's, this one's going to be an athletics check no acrobatics check acrobatics check just to be safe 
13. You do fine. All right, you are you are now out. You're at the bottom left of the scene here, and you know that you have to go to the top right to get to the library. Um, you can make a perception roll now that you're outside of the city. I mean, outside of the inn. Perception. Here, that is 15. What did you roll? 15. What did you roll? 15. Um, you see a, a large amount of fire burning just two blocks to your north. And um, you also hear the whooshing sound in the sky of something. You're not sure what. Okay, that does make the hairs on my uh, neck stand up. I don't like that. And now, hmm. You, you also see that the, these streets, which you're very familiar with, are much more empty than usual. Normally, you see at least a few people in this part of town at this time of day. But right now, it is almost entirely empty. And you hear shouts in the distance in another district of the city. Oh, bugger. Uh, oh, bugger. Um, well, it's not my business, I just continue on my way. Alright, uh, what kind of pace do you move at? Very, I mean, a little bit, um, like, paying attention, but I'll try, because I need to still make a delivery, I am going a little bit on a faster pace. Very good. Um, I gave you control of your character. I'm going to move him up a little bit this way. Um, as you do, you see this statue here of Kilvar Fireforge, who is the current king of the city, dwarven king of the city. That's a statue of him, which you know very well. Walk way over the water. If you scroll up, you see that there's the giant flame. Over the water, if you scroll up, you see that there's the giant flame lighting this part of uh, the courtyard, um, so you, th you think it would be safer if you make a right here, which will give you a direct route to the Great Library, which you know is one of the safer places in the city, and normally people do not have access to it, but you as a delivery man might be able to. Um, you also notice with your 15 perception as you walk through the cobblestone streets, you see billowing smoke in other parts of the city as well. So you know this to be the Great Library at the end of the bridge. Um, You've come out here for a walk sometimes, uh, as the citizens do, but to enter the Great Library is something that is usually only reserved for um, great scholars or um, wizards who are doing experiments or um, sometimes diplomats and things like that. Mm. Yikes, is that big hole in the bridge usual? Um, it is not usual, and you're not sure why that is there. Um, well, a delivery is a delivery. I'll, uh, try to get past it and over the rubble and to where I need to go. Alright, let me give you access to that. Alright. Make a... Uh, make a dexterity check for climbing over this rubble. Uh, dexterity. Ah, oh, it's uh, it's from the bigger uh, numbers, I guess. Uh, nine. <laughs> nine. You uh, you kind of stumble down to the other side, on your bottom a bit, and you get a little dirtied, but you're fine, and you maintain the meat in the sack. I uh, dust off my buttocks. Um, normally you see several guards here and court wizards here um and let's see this is actually here um but here you only see one guard and he seems to be a bit panicked uh Privet! hello and they want to uh make a perception roll uh, 18. Um, you see that he is a half-elf, he's a young guard, kind of a young man, um, probably new. Um, but then again, he's a, he's a half-elf, so he could be a little bit older than you anticipate. And he 
is his eyes are on the horizon looking above you. He's not very concerned about you. Um, and he says, what can, I, what can I do to help you? Meat delivery from, uh, from Barbara. I was supposed to bring uh, this 45 pounds of cut meat here today. You, you what? I had to bring meat. We had an order come in. It's a highly unusual one, but it's an order. A lot of meat. You see him uh, panic and run this way and start cranking a big gate. This gate here that is slowly lifting. And he says, get in quick, dragon. And make a perception roll. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, 14. Uh, you do see, smaller than you anticipated though, a red dragon flying from the city directly toward the bridge that you're on. Um, and it's coming at great speed. <laughs> and he's cranking the gate. Make, uh, make an athletics roll. <laughs> 11. <laughs> With athletics, yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 11. 11. <laughs> no, fuck that, no, yet. <laughs> uh, ah! you, you make it, you make it in, you make it in, you make it in. The whole bridge behind you is let of flame. Uh, you imagine that the guard is, is safe. He has uh, guard entrances up there. But this whole thing is lit on flame. Um, make a nature roll as well. A nature roll? Uh, wait, do I have a thingy in that? No, seven. Okay, all you know is that, you know, there hasn't been a dragon seen here in maybe 80, 70 or 80 years. And they're not common. They're very dangerous. Red dragons are one of the more dangerous ones. You don't know. You don't know much more than that. Um, dragons are one of the more mainstream things to have known about in legend and lore, um, and they are real. But you just—you've never seen one with your own eyes, and you do think that it was much smaller than you thought they would ever be. Um, one moment, and we will move to the next scene here. <laughs> oh, <what's going> <laughs> uh, ah, hello! <laughs> I think I know what red dragon dragon it is. Uh, let's but see here. Let me move your token right here, and I'll give you control of that token. Music's also a little loud. Turn the music down. Uh, not for. Oh yeah, it is. Where the fuck do I do that? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I got it, I, I got it. it. I got it, I got I it, got I got it. it. Oh, thank you. Okay. So you are inside the great library with a sack of meat. <laughs> this plan, this better pave well, Suk. <laughs> and I mean, and he means it. What the hell are they? He's kind of shook too. Dragon? Yeah. Huh? I look around the uh, the room, I guess. Um all right, yeah, make a perception roll. 15. So, you when you pass the first gate, you heard it close behind you, you heard a second gate close behind you. And then wooden doors also closed over those two gates. The guard that was on top made his way down a stairwell, a spiral staircase, and down toward a uh, barrack that the, bar the library has. So he's safe. You perceive yourself to be safe within the library. You've, gr you've been here for many, many years. And although you've never actually set foot inside this library, you do know that it does have great magics that protect its outside. The bridge itself may not have those protections, but you know that the library itself has some of the most powerful magics in the realm, protecting its masonry and things like that. 
So you do feel safe in here, and you're actually a little bit put off at, as to how calm everyone is in here, considering there is a dragon around the city. Um, you see homunculi. You don't need to roll for what those are. You know what they are, and I'll show you a picture. Homunculi are small... Let me see if I have a picture here. One second. Uh, oh, sorry. Is or, uh... homunculi? Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find it, actually. I don't know if I actually put it here. Um... Can't find it. <laughs> but um, homunculi are Basically, small little eyes. creatures that are often created from different things like clay and ash by wizards to have them do their bidding. Oh, I found it. Hang on. I'm about to give it to you. So many, so many handouts and notes here. It's like I'm scrolling through different categories. I've just realized that I haven't put in my rapier into the, uh... That's in... okay. Oh, that's no, okay. there it is there. I can see it there. That's what this sort of session is for, to kind of make sure we finish all the things. I just I restored if... the image. Oh, here it is. I don't think I should have my weapons on me on the job, really, so I guess they're somewhere. Ugh. So these are little things. They're about, I'm gonna say they're about two feet tall. Their wings are too shriveled to be used for flight. Uh, you have seen these before in town. Um, not often, but they're usually... You rarely see them, but when you do see them, they're with a magic user. Magic users are not too common. You might see them with a nobleman or a wizard or something mm -hmm. of the sort. And they are basically small little servants that waddle around. Um, they often look sickly and weak. Um, and they usually don't really speak, but they usually understand commands of whoever their owner is. And you see them here working on books. They're working on the restoration of books. They're fixing the bindings. They're transcribing things with quills. Um, and then you see a young man over here who's sort of carrying books around and things like that. Um, and then sitting, uh, sitting at the front of the desk there. Let me get the information on that fellow. One moment. So many tabs, so many things. Well, I like that there are like wet stains or something on the carpet. Some stain, <laughs> some sort of stains. I like the little detail. Yes, and you can see that this place has, you know, that this place is is very ancient. It's been here for a very, very long time. Um. Okay, we have. My gosh, there's so many tabs here. Uh, so this is out of order. Here we are. So the boy is there. Um, that's the boy that's carrying some books around. And the oh, man's is sitting... Boy. Yeah. And the man sitting um, up at the top there is... Uh, that's him. And you perceive this to be some sort of um, kind of index room or reference room, kind of the information room of the library. Hmm. Fenric, eh? <clears throat> oh, I don't know that name yet. Uh, okay, so... Um, is this the part where I do something now? Sure, yeah. I was just giving you a little introduction of your, your perception role. Uh, I don't have movement or, or, over my token again. Ah, but, um, oh, I fixed it. Let me see if I can... <clears throat> so... Um, there we are. You have movement now. Yeah. Okay, so while at the door, I've got gotten a little bit time to re uh, collect myself. People are strangely uh, <laughs> calm here. I remove my bowler hat and continue down the carpet towards the, I guess, the main guy, from what I can understand. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I guess I'm somewhere here. Then I'm not going up to the table yet, and. Uh, I guess I'll take the bag over my shoulder and place it on the steps here, like... <laughs> Welcome to the Great Library. I see you here to deliver the meat. Is that right? That, that is correct. Um, so he shows you... 
This map doesn't show everything. Um, so, part of the map, uh, the, the reference on the right you're not going to see, and some of the hidden passages you're not going to see on that, so just pretend that you don't see it. He gestures to room number one, and he says, We are here on room one, and you must go to 22. And 22 is the big chamber on the top of the map there. Yeah, and, and that's about, I want to say, three minute walk. Three minute walk, so... Hmm. Okay. And I just, I guess it's, I just look around confused because... Wait, do I get this map actually? Like, he, you know, he doesn't give it to you, it's just a map that he shows you and it's not a complete map. Uh, not as complete as the one that I just showed you. He says, Never mind, just come with me. And he gets up and he starts walking you through the library. Uh, make a perception roll as you do that. And I'm actually going to get a token for him as well. Perception is six. Not great. <laughs> There, we're gonna use. I gotta have it token for him. For him. Um, Did my guy just get bigger with that? Yeah, I made him a little bigger because I realized he was too small. Um, <laughs> so as you pass through the library, you see um, all of these different sections of the library. You see. Uh, first, you go through this area here. Oh, kill him. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> it's gonna take a second to load because it's a big file. So it might be blurry at first. I guess the perception that I rolled that goes well with my character is because I do have only one eye to look at things. So <laughs> yeah, fitting. And so you all, you the two of you, walk forward, um, and you see swirling papers front of you. Um, they're just swirling around. You're not really sure what that is, but Byron doesn't seem to be very um, surprised by it at all. It seems to be commonplace for him. And what he's slowly... Things? and he's slowing walk. Oh, he says, that is the reference. You ask it anything and it'll tell you where it is. Huh. <laughs> and he walks, th he walks through this area here. Joseph will remember that. <laughs> uh, I follow him. Um, you pass you pass several other doors that lead to very large areas of the library, um, but you don't go in those actual areas. One moment. Just moving some tokens over. Uh, make another perception roll here. Uh, this music, it is, uh, four even worse. I guess I'm so intrigued or, um, it's just such a big place and I'm just, wow. Yeah. This is cool. I love making this stuff, putting all the maps together that I find. I add the maps and I'll add maps and I'll add music and stuff. It's a lot of fun. And the tokens. So. Make a perception roll for this room. Uh, it was four. Ah, okay. So with a four, you notice something strange dangling from the ceiling. You're not sure if it's uh, some form of artwork or a tapestry or something, but it is large. And you also see on the other side of the room some kind of glowing cylinder with uh, several metal pipes and also some glowing crystals over there. And many, many books. Um, that is all you can perceive with a four. Yeah. Byron is calmly walking through this room. Byron seems to be quite the plain man. He seems to be very tired of his work. Very bored. As you get closer, you see that inside this cylinder is um, what appears to be some kind of discolored brain 
a large brain, much bigger than a human skull. And it seems to be in a fluid that is murky and swirling slowly, very, very slowly. Yay! Joseph uh, cringes just a little tad bit. <laughs> My distance a bit, a bit. Byron waves you over. <clears throat> I clear my throat and. <laughs> I guess I go um, closer. And so Byron takes off of the shelf um, a glass jar. Make, uh, make an arcana roll. A 13. 13. Well, with your background, and even with a 13 roll, you're not really sure what that is. But yeah. Byron opens one of the metal canisters that have um, several metal pipes coming out of them. You see several metal pipes connected with, it, connected with this cylinder. And he pours this fluid into the canister. And it you see it flow into the liquid around the brain and then he closes that canister and opens another one that's larger and he waves you over again he says bring the sack I bring the sack and put the sack in front of me he says pour the meat in here and um, make another perception roll out you're a bit closer yeah I, I was just about to say I just eye the brain and yeah Keep doing what they are. Okay, doing. with an 11, um, you see this brain, brain is part of this larger contraption, and these different cylinders are powered. Make another arcane roll for a different thing that you're looking at now. 12. 12, okay. So, um, you know that there are certain crystals that come from different planes of existence and they're often used to power certain magical devices mechanical magical devices and uh there are different there are maybe a total of about you want to say three or four different stones about the size of uh, a football and they are charging this machinery and then this cylinder and you believe that this is sort of keeping whatever brain this is alive and um you see that the container that gesturing for you you to put the meat in has a kind of meat grinder on the surface of the cylinder and so he is poised and ready to rotate the grinder as he is expecting you to dump the meat into it okay and i do that uh, carefully so not to get the hay in there that you say in the bottom hmm. so make a sleight of hand roll to see how good your your hand work is to pour the meat in there Okay, hold on. I think I have something for which side of hand is dexterity. Uh, <clears throat> wait, okay. Oh no, not, never mind. Sleight of hand check. It is 21. Oh, excellent. You do not pour all, pour all, all of the meat into the grinder as Byron grinds it for you. And um, you see the murky water in this cylinder turn reddish as you see that the meat has been ground and pureed into the cylinder and you can only imagine that somehow this brain is receiving nutrients from this and you also notice that above you it is not a tapestry that is hanging from the ceiling but it is the dried skin and corpse of something um, you're not sure what we're going to do a nature roll on that. Make a nature roll to see if you can identify what kind of... 15 is good enough. 15 is good enough. You barely recognize... Mm, you're not quite sure what it's called, but you've seen these creatures before in stories and in books. They are very magical and they have tentacles with eyes and they are very intelligent and very dangerous and they're very greedy and they're very paranoid. But you can't remember what they're called, and you believe that this brain is from that creature, and the carcass hanging from the ceiling is almost like a piece in a museum, hanging there 
to learn from, to see from, as if it was taxidermied. Uh -huh. But I've seen anything like this before. You seem a little like this before. You seem a little stunned. I've only heard stories of things like this, but never seen with my own eye, you know. He continues to grind the meat, and he seems uh, like it's a very routine thing for him, and he says, Not many people from outside see the beholder, the seeker, the uh, that which monitors all of the information in the library. This brain is interconnected with all of the knowledge, and in exchange for the knowledge that it reads, the knowledge it has of the arcana, of the arcana. This fluid that I've poured in here prevents it from dreaming. How much do you know about beholders? Uh, like I said, I've only heard stories of and depictions of creatures that look similar to that one up there. You see, when a beholder sleeps and dreams, its dreams can become real. That is how beholders are created. A beholder must dream another beholder. So we must keep it awake at all. Right now it is in a state of par in a state of paralysis, not asleep nor awake, while we feed it. If it ever sleeps, the danger of it escaping or destroying what is around it is imminent. He continues to grind the meat. Yeah, so... There seems to be a flying creature outside, and I notice you're... not a slight bit worried about that. Though uh, I presume it's because of the great magic protecting this place that I've heard of. The creature uh, does hover when uh, does hover when it is alive, but it is rendered helpless without its body. But its magic is still very strong. As long as it doesn't sleep, and as long as it no longer has its tentacles and eyes, it cannot cast spells. But sleep is what we must be careful of, because even without its body, this brain could sleep. I was referring to the dragon outside, but that's interesting to hear. Ah, yeah. Byron looks at you and says, um, part of the job is to finish grinding the meat yourself. Now that you know your way around the library, I will see you at the front for payment when you're done. Um, and you take a look and you see that it, there's still another good five to ten minutes of grinding. There's an awful lot of meat and it does take... Um, well, Byron, Byron, well, Byron, Byron says, do you have any other questions? For now, yet. Okay, so he leaves and walks back toward the information room. Well, I take off my overcoat. Uh, I guess I press it on steps here. Also, I put my hat on top of my, the overcoat. I uh, ring up my sleeves of my <laughs> white shirt. <laughs> Wait, am I actually wearing those fine clothes while I do this? Yes. <laughs> oh, Charlie! Okay, I'll, I'll ring those up and um, just cook just again, then cook again, then carefully start grinding the meat, trying not to get splatter on my white shirt. Okay, make a strength check. Strength, that is. Oof! A three! Ooh. You're having a hard time, some of the meat is getting stuck in the grinder, so it's going to take you a little bit longer than usual. So you're here all alone, and you're, you're pushing this lever, or this, um, that, the, the, the rotator, you know, you're pushing it as hard as you can. And it's actually kind of starting to hurt your hands, but you are getting the job done. Um, oh, in the days where... And you, you notice the brain pulsating. I'm not sure what that means, but it is pulsating. 
sure what that means, but it is pulsating. I stop and just look at it. I'm ready to bolt the hell out of here. <laughs> you see as if the reddish the reddish cloud from the meat is almost as if it's being like absorbed into the brain. And the water turns kind of murky green again as you stopped grinding the meat. Uh, I continue grinding and just <clears throat> in, a, in a little bit of a joking tone, you know, just like a casual turn. Let's just say, bon appetit, or I hope you're enjoying your meal mm. and just continue grinding. I hope that you like my, my, I hope that you like my, my butcher's cuts. He's a good butcher, good man. Feast. So you, as you're grinding alone, you think you hear something echoing in the room. You're not quite sure if you hear voices. You're not certain. But then you I... hear very clearly in your mind <clears throat> a voice. Let me sleep. I need to sleep. And that's what you hear. I just continue grinding. I try not to make a lot of it because I try not to make a lot of it because I have no fucking from what I heard. I don't want to do any I don't want any business with that. I just continue grinding. To get my job done. In uh, I, I, in in my in my mind, I uh, say, I'm just here to get my get the job done. And continue grinding. I am in pain. I am a prisoner in this tube. Let me dream or let me die. I continue grinding. I, just, I, I, hmm, hmm. I just continue grinding. I, as Joseph, I have no idea what to say to that because I've never experienced this before. Um, as you finish, the last of the meat goes into the cylinder, and your job is complete, and the words echo in your head, let me dream or let me die. Let me dream or let me die. Ask, are you still here? Are you still in Are you still here? Are you still in here? Yes, I am. Who are you? What are you? I am the Keeper. I am a Beholder. I was once very powerful, but I was found in an eternal battle with a sentient sword and I was captured kept here my brain kept alive and now I wish to dream or to die but I am cursed with staying awake forever I slowly walk over to my coat and hat. I pick them up. Um, <clears throat> uh, I put my overcoat over my left hand and also my my hat. I hold with my right hand, and and I also pick up the sack. And I also pick up the sack. The sack is very light now that it is empty and it's still clean from the outside. Yeah, the inside I'll... is terribly dirty though. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it over my... Uh, also put it over my left hand.
this uh, in my mind to say your mic actually, yeah. sorry uh, I, I actually don't know what to say I I guess I just I, in my mind I say I just turn around and go because I just don't know what to say. Ah, these are the good moments in D&D when you're not sure. I like that. Okay, so you make your way to the front of the library. Uh, let me bring us back there. And Byron um, says to you, I will have your payment for you shortly. Please wait in the, the waiting chamber. And he waves you over to, <clears throat> let's see here, this area here. And uh, he gestures for you to have a seat at one of these. It's a very calm room. You don't hear any of the wind by the sea. You don't hear the seagulls. You don't hear the fire or the explosions in the city. You feel like this library is completely isolated from everything. It's almost a bit creepy. You know that there is profound magic in here. Profound knowledge, things of the world that most people don't know about. Um, I set the my overcoat and the sack were an arm of the chair. Trying to be a bit careful that Nothing from inside the bag gets off. Very good. 